All right, what up YouTube? Let's dive right into it. You guys have been following my journey for a really long time in the Kadena ecosystem. Have I ever promoted a bad project to you guys on purpose to try to make myself more money? Have I ever gone out of my way to try to make somebody look bad so I can make more money? Have you ever seen me do anything to get a click or a view or anything of the sort? One of my subscribers comes into the live stream and he starts dropping some factual evidence pointing out very, very big flaws with the NFTs that are launching on Kadena. So of course it got my attention because I've been investing heavily into these NFTs, not just investing in them, but I've been bringing projects on my channel to promote and make their projects money. We did five NFT whitelist spots and giveaways for you guys. And I didn't charge any one of those projects a freaking penny, not one of them. I got, I brought them on the show to promote. I didn't get a free NFT out of it. I didn't get an airdrop. I didn't get anything because I believed in their products and I thought they were actually doing good and actually putting out good content and helping grow the Kadena ecosystem. When you guys listen to this Medium article I'm about to read off to you, all the facts will speak for themselves. So everybody out there on Twitter that was talking bad about me, saying I'm out here shilling FUD, think about who you're attacking. You're attacking the person that's always been here, giving you guys truthful, honest, accurate information, calling me a liar, saying I'm shilling FUD, saying I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's take a look at this article. And again, big shout out to Yepi. We're gonna do something super special for Yepi when he launches his own, trust me bro, NFT collection. So introduction, last week I started digging into a few projects that claim to sell NFTs, AKA non-fungible tokens. Some of these projects are well known in the space like the Kadena Bulls, KMC, Kadena Mining Club, Spiders, Komodos, and a few more. I identified some serious issues in these projects, including unfair launch and manipulation of images off chain. Because Pact is human readable and there's an easy to use block explorer, I was able to see the issues pretty easily. I received a ton of backlash on Twitter after exposing them. They responded saying it was misinformation and that my claims were absurd. Then a few days later, they started writing medium articles trying to convince their community that they were doing God's work. I take full responsibility for these claims, so go after me, not Ryan Matta. Taking a step back, where did all this start? Is it really innovation taking place? Remember the Galleons, then Kitty Cads, then the 80s Bulls, and then all these other projects? A lot of copy and pasting happened in between, and Arcade has managed to add a few functions and steps to create a launch pad and a marketplace. What is wrong with the butter standard from a community point of view? Just about everything. Creators and admins can cheat and manipulate everything from Mint and even after. And what's wrong is that they've had extensive marketing calling these NFTs. How can they be an NFT if the image, the owner, and everything about it can be changed? Even if they didn't change anything after Mint, the minting process has not been fair to the public at all. The upgradable smart contract claim is actually useless. Kadena contracts are upgradable, yes. But the problem with the butter standard method is that if they messed up off chain, there's no way to verify it on chain. Nobody will be able to tell if something sketchy or wrong happened before or during the mint. Why? Because before the mint and after the mint don't compare on chain. So now let's talk about the 80s bulls. This is one of the collections that basically gave the green light to Arcade, or I believe that they made a lot of their funding to put this project together because of these bulls NFTs. This one's really gonna blow your mind. The 80s bulls mint. The 80s bulls contract were created and then the bulls were put up for sale through a set of transactions before the mint started. Anyone could go and see what was going to mint next along with the traits and images. Here's one of the transactions. So how could you tell the order in which they are going to mint? Pack sees numbers in alphanumerical order. I'll leave it at this to see if any projects are willing to talk about it. So now that it's clear that anybody with a slight background in coding could get the rarest of the bulls. Arcade changed the butter standard and now it's even worse. With new projects launching, they've updated it so that the community can't cheat and see the collection before the mint. At least everyone could verify the collection and try sniping before. But now the arcade team knows exactly where the rare ones are so that they can mint them for themselves and the community won't stand a chance. This is the same arcade team that's out there posting post after post after post attacking me saying that I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, how do you guys feel about those bulls now? How do you guys feel about every Kadena NFT that you spent your hard earned money on to come to find out that these guys were able to cheat in the beginning of the mint? They knew where the rares were and that's not even the worst part. Check this out. When KDA Punks tweeted this, nobody really said anything. 
These guys knew exactly when and where the rarest mints would be. They made a post and said these punks right here were going to be minted out in the next 50 mints. Arcade addressing rarities and metadata in their latest Medium article. This is straight up a lie to the community after what I proved. They never addressed the case of the bulls hiding information again. All rarities are made public after the Launchpad Mint is complete to ensure fairness. Some projects may decide not to include rarities as the purpose behind each project is different. Off-chain metadata. We require that all metadata attributes for each collection are not uploaded on-chain to the contract with the purpose of preventing collectors from sniping specific NFTs. Therefore, all metadata is uploaded to IPFS and the link is shared after the mint concludes. Each project then has the option to backfill metadata to the correct contract. Here's, here's the issue, because we're gonna keep going in this. So we have Solana, we have Ethereum, we have the ERC721 standard. If you wanna follow the ERC721 standard, you wanna make ERC721 NFTs, just do it on Solana, they're cheap. We are waiting for the Marmalade standard because this is the standard that's going to fix every single issue that's wrong with NFTs and bring it all home. And that's gonna be local on Kadena. But instead of waiting and doing things right or actually developing a standard that was actually not a joke, right? No wonder the Kadena team probably looked at this and just laughed because it's not even, it doesn't even compare or equal the ERC721 standard, let alone a Kadena level standard. Let's continue. Smash spiders changing images. Got the wrong NFT. I just changed it. Wait, actually, wait, actually, I'll just take it. A few community members complained about changing images. So what's really happening over there? They're hosting their images on a centralized server and identifying them in ID order with no image hash, just an ID. So they have the ability to change them. Let's say you got spider number 999 and it happens to be the same as number 278. They can just change them. Here is people in the Komodo's Discord. The community is publicly asking these questions. So far, these projects have not been transparent about the issues and they refuse to own up to any of their wrongdoings. This is how one of the team members on Arcade responded to me. Here is K. Krobe replying to Ryan Mata Media and Yepi. I know the fundamentals, ya cuck, ya cuck F. I'm not dumb. Don't assume there is no effing butter standard in place being used. So this must be Chris because Chris commented, I wonder if Krobe is Chris Robinson. And I'm pretty sure I know who that is. That's Chris Robinson, if I'm not mistaken, because he was personally attacking me on my YouTube videos, going through my videos, telling me that I'm shilling FUD and I don't know what the F I'm talking about and I'm an idiot and I'm all these things. But I hear you're a whale in every one of these collections. I know the fundamentals, you cuck F. I ain't dumb. Don't assume there is no effing butter standard in place being used. You mean the trust me bro standard? The TMB, baby. Kadena NFT is the trust me bro standard. So this is K-Rob publicly insulting Yepi for exposing the truth. He even says the butter standard isn't being used. Arcade discussing dynamic NFTs. The Providence hash. Providence hashes are good practices to implement before the mint. However, this is not possible for all NFTs. Some examples of the projects that require their NFTs to be dynamic include games with upgradable items, NFT breeding, real-time updating assets such as real estate, protection against potential copyright issues. You can read more about dynamic NFTs here. You can also read more about the use cases of Providence Hash in this article written by the founders of the Kadena Mining Club. Arcade recently spoke about dynamic NFTs and how hashes don't work because metadata needs to change. So here's my solutions. Either use minting and burning mechanisms to do something creative like the following. Create an NFT or collection with a Providence hash. Add specific fields to point to changes, upgradable data, and fairly distribute them. How does this solve the issue? The NFTs are still static in nature, but they point to dynamic fields. Hence, you can implement everything you need to around it, including a fair launch for the community. Closing remarks. They've tried to explain how Marmalade works in a few articles and threads, yet they haven't built using the standard or even tried to fork it. If passion was the drive, they would have taken a totally different approach to building this marketplace. The team has no experience and they've created a complete mess within the Kadena community, in my opinion. And if you want to understand more to investigate the code and the blockchain, don't trust somebody who copied and pasted and got their explanations wrong. Arcade took... <laughs> Arcade took the easy and most profitable approach, keep this in mind. And launching an NFT collection on the butter standard. For those of you who are not too well versed with the code and with further proof and explanation, I will be launching a free collection in the next few weeks where anyone can mint. I will then start to display what is wrong with the butter standard live and showcase exactly what you have been buying. 
This is how we move forward as a community. Code is truth, words are useless. So big shout out to Yuppie, man. It's so hard to not like get really defensive when I have so many people on Twitter accusing me and talking smack and saying I'm spreading FUD and all this A, B, and C. I've always done whatever I can to try to look out for you guys. And it's not my fault. I was buying these NFTs. I was promoting these NFTs. I thought they were real NFTs and they're not even NFTs. They are not non-fungible tokens. So you can go do it on Ethereum. Go do it on Solana. I mean, this reminds me of something that would happen in Tron. And that's what Kadena is starting to feel like because of these scam projects. It's like nothing that's building on Kadena seems to be showcasing what Kadena is capable of. Uh, we haven't heard from the team. It's a bummer. Like, I don't know how this happened for so long. I know what to say, man. Just, it's so sad seeing so many people that I, you know, got along with in this community and helped and helped guide and teach and coach. And then because they have their money tied up in these NFT collections or they got involved with the teams and they're now a dev on one of the teams and they've been promoting and shilling these products to everybody while the teams and devs have been able to snipe the rares. So every penny you lost, every penny you invested into Arcade, every penny you invested into the Bulls, every penny that you invested into Kitty Cat, it's gone. And people in the community want to go and act like this is no big deal and give these guys a second chance. You know, I, and, I, and I felt like Kadena Mining Club, sure, right? In the beginning, I was like, oh, Maybe they didn't know, right? Like they're just gonna remint these. Like now that this is so public, they're definitely gonna remint these. But why is everybody trying to act? And so why is everybody trying to act like nothing was wrong here? Like this wasn't complete and utter fraud to the T. I mean, this is absolute freaking fraud. Simple, man.